A lot of people just think coffee tastes like coffee. And what we're trying to educate people is that there are lots of different flavours and aromas that occur within coffee. So it's very much like wine tasting. And that's what we're trying to bring to coffee and coffee making. The sort of equipment that we've got on the coffee lab is all designed to enable you to experience coffee in different ways. And things like pour overs, um, on coffee siphons, and on really high-tech equipment like the Slayer. But I want to sort of show you a coffee siphon to start with. It's a brewing technique where we put hot water in the bottom. There'll be a change in atmospheric pressure which forces the water to come into the top chamber. We brew the coffee in the top chamber. And the resulting coffee that you get is very tea-like. We fill the water into the bottom chamber. And what I'm trying to do here is just sort of start getting some steam happening in there, which occurs around about 96 degrees. What we're waiting for is we're waiting for half of the water to move out of the bottom chamber and come into the top. We'll then add the coffee, we do a stir, and then we actually start the brewing process. And when we hit 40 seconds, what I'm going to do is cut the flame. That will reduce the pressure in the bottom bowl, and we'll then start actually having the extraction process occurring. Yoga Chef as well is obviously fairly well will be known for sort of that lemon and berry sort of type taste. So we're expecting to be tasting something here that's quite, um, quite citrusy in its, in its taste. We're using much higher quality coffees than what we use normally in a typical espresso blend. And the reason for that is you've got to be able to have a higher quality coffee to be able to showcase those desirable flavours. Um, there are other methods of making coffee that have similar taste profiles to them, but just some subtleties. Pour over is one of them. With the pour over, it's a bit sort of murkier. It's got a bit more of the solid sort of coming through in this. So let me show you the Slayer and give you a taste. We're going to go for something a little bit darker. It's a darker roast. It's actually a Guatemalan. Um, it's still a very high grade specialty bean. Uh, reheating the group head, lock the handle in. And the way that we've got the Slayer set is that when the paddle is in this middle position, we are applying approximately two and a half bars of pressure. So we're just starting to get the beads on the underside of the naked portafilter. We're going to push the espresso right the way around to full bar for approximately three seconds and then pull it back and allow the pressure to drop back down to that pre-infusion stage of around two bars of pressure. Okay. And what you find with the Slayer is because we're finding that sweet spot, we've removed the bitterness, we've removed the acidity from it, and what we're, what we're doing is exaggerating the desirable flavours in the coffee. Sugar's no longer required. This is the whole part about the third wave of coffee. What we're trying to do is get people to experience coffee how it really tastes, not how we've been having to make it um, on older style espresso machines in the past. in Hawaiian means bitter because the root when you drink it has a bitter taste to it. It's also known as kava tree of Polynesia. In Hawaii it's known as apa. So we can start uh, digging around the plant and then pull it out. This looks like a whole lot of hard work. It is a little bit of work, <laughs> especially with stones you have to fight with it a little bit. There's the main corn potato and then below that is the lateral roots. This is where the most potent, as you get up to the top of the plant it's less potent. We chop it into small pieces and dry it about one week in sun like this. Mm -hmm. uh, we put it through a hammer mill to make a fine powder. They use this for ceremonial purposes like when they have hula dances and they'll use the, the powder to make a drink for before they dance. They drink a little bit to form a ceremony and uh, traditionally they have like uh, new moon ceremonies where once a month they all get together and they'll drink. And just the regular people that want to just use it socially or just help them sleep, help them relax. And is there a certain cheers that the Hawaiians do when they're drinking kava? Like cheers or...? There's a... They usually clap first. Mm -hmm. They do one clap and then, and then they drink. Alrighty. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> have to get some more to fill this up.
I got into hospitality because of uh, a burning desire for independence. Um, when I grew up, I grew up as a young boy in a hospitality family. My dad was a chef, he came out here in 1960. Um, he came out and he loved Melbourne so much back in those times, he could see the uh, potential of this great town and so he never went back, never went back for one day, he loved it so much. He set up his family here, brought mum out and uh, off, off he went. And um, I uh, grew up uh, in and out of kitchens uh, as a young lad from a, the age of about six or seven on school holidays and weekends and things like that um, and I vowed never to become a chef or a cook because I, I could see how hard it was and how daunting uh, the professional kitchen environment could be. Um, but as soon as I turned 15, I decided that um, I wanted my independence and I felt comfortable in a kitchen, so that's where I ended up. And uh, I've never looked back, I absolutely love it. Well, I caught the bug from my father and my auntie and well, my whole family. Because Sounds like a disease. Well, it is a little <laughs> bit at times. <laughs> it gets under your yeah, skin, it doesn't does. it? It does, it's hard, it's, hard to, uh, it's hard to get rid of it once you've got it. So there's nothing like an adrenaline rush service on a Saturday night at a bistro or fine dining upstairs. You just live for it. So It starts off out of necessity, you know, yeah. you get dragged in because oh, you've got to come and help <laughs> yeah. out then pretty soon. No, please stay away, you don't have to come anymore, but, <laughs> but you're there uh, every day. Skin, yeah. yeah, you can't help it, you get absorbed by it. It becomes an obsession, like uh, all good things, all good careers, I suppose you get obsessed by it a little bit. The good thing is that you enjoy it, you've got to enjoy it. If oh, you, you've got you can't do it. this job unless yeah. you're really enjoying yeah, it's it, a very, passionate about it's it. A very passion fueled um, a passion fueled career. Sometimes that's all you run off with, the energy runs down. But it's fantastic, I love it. I wouldn't change careers for the world. I think, uh, you know, the people of Melbourne love lifestyle um, and it reflects in the street. You walk down any, any city street these days and it reflects in the bars, in the cafes, uh, you know, there's art shows on all the time. We've got fantastic theatre happening all the time. It's just, um, it's just good events, good festivals. Um, it's just a fun town. It's always erupting with uh, laughter and people having a good time. It's a city made up still, fortunately, of, of very many different strips and you're outdoors you're walking around, you're feeling the atmosphere of a city um, and although you know uh, we, have the, we have had the introduction of other kinds of complexes I think um, the people of Melbourne vote with their feet and they still uh, frequent these strips quite regularly so that they're still successful um, and that gives I believe a city a real unique kind of character and the food's great too I mean these days it's pretty hard to go out and get a bad meal um, you, you're surprised uh, usually uh, at whatever level you're sort of dining at whether you're dining at very upmarket at restaurants or sort of mid-market, even the lower end, you can still get really decent, good quality food, which is great. Sort of just soak up the, the culture and the vibe of everything, walk around and go to the Victoria Market and places like that on a Tuesday and just soak up the smells and the sounds and all the lovely little delectables that they have on offer there. That's one of my favourite places on one a Tuesday One of the best morning. markets in the world. It's it beautiful. is the best market in the world, so mm. yeah, I love it.